Switzerland. This is Reda Satki. So I'm here with Charlotte Mbou and Dr. Francois Gassa. Uh, and we're here because yesterday was the technical support. This is very different. This is the second time we're meeting for a very specific purpose, and that is to share experience between immunization practitioners. So it's a unique opportunity to actually connect, listen, learn, share your own practices, ideas. We're doing this through the ideas engine, but in this live session, you get to hear it firsthand. Charlotte is also going to show you what this famous ideas engine looks like, uh, what this ideas engine looks like and how it can be uh, of use to you. She won't be demonstrating. She'll be, you know, but um, if you participate in the session, you'll get to see the ideas engine, see how it works and hopefully see how it can help you. So we'll be starting in 40 seconds and Charlotte how are you doing I'm doing great Reda and hello everyone well, welcome to you all right great 30 seconds and we'll be starting so the experience sharing session this is a unique opportunity to really uh, connect with others from all over the world and see how are they doing what are they doing to improve vaccination to achieve their programs goals um, what's the innovation that is making a difference? That is what we'll be talking about, and that's certainly worth applauding as we go into this uh, uh, this session. So let me be clear, if you've just joined us, especially if you're joining us for the first time, or you, you just figured out what is this session, I'm going to tell you all about it together with uh, Charlotte Mbou and uh, Dr. Francois Gass, but uh, know that you have joined the world's largest uh, platform, community, of immunization professionals. You can see there's 43,655 people active. I think those are yesterday's numbers. So this uh, has surely gone up. This is not only about you connecting with us or us connecting with you, but it's about you connecting with each other because uh, we launched a call to join the Movement for Immunization. So this is uh, the Movement for Immunization Agenda 2030. It's the world's strategy for the decade for how Every country, all countries are going to work together to achieve the immunization goals. You can find the call for the movement. You can still actually apply and join um, on the Geneva Learning Foundation's website, learning.foundation. As of Monday, we were 6,144 immunization professionals that have been accepted into what we call the full learning cycle. This is a series of activities. Uh, it is not a course because it is focused on your challenges, um, challenges such as children who are unvaccinated, missed communities, epidemic outbreaks of measles, yellow fever, other diseases, lack of confidence in vaccines, marginalized communities, gender barriers. And today you're going to hear firsthand, this is actually session two. Uh, so let me, I think we, what we'll do is we'll take this out from the... Uh, uh, slide deck so we can reuse it every time. This is the second session uh, today and um, in which we're going to be sharing experience but doing it with a very specific focus on what we call the ideas engine. And this is an incredible uh, way to share an idea or a practice that you have and discover hundreds of ideas and practices shared by fellow immunization staff from all over the world. Now, if you are having problems, technical problems with joining the platform, with your password, with your login, with figuring out what your tasks are. Uh, there is a session, a different session, the pink session, the technical support. Today you are in the blue session, which is about sharing of, of experience. Uh, one more tip that I'm going to share with you is if you have poor connectivity, uh, I encourage you to subscribe to the Geneva Learning Foundation's podcast. Uh, there is one specifically for the uh, IA2030 movement. So if you go, for example, to Google Podcast and you type IA2030 into the search, you can find the, there's a French one, but there's also the uh, um, uh, Full Learning Cycle 1 movement podcast. What can you find in the podcast? Well, let me see if I can get the screen. Yeah. So if you click on the podcast itself, you'll see... Basically, pretty much every live session, every uh, tutorial is in here. It's audio only, so it will consume a lot less bandwidth. Now, I'm uh, pleased and it's always an honor to introduce Dr. Francois Gass, a uh, living legend in the world of immunization who, is, uh, who has accepted um, Charlotte's invitation to help you uh, listen to you, uh, give you feedback, share his own experience uh, as we work together to, uh, uh, through this session to share uh, to share experience with a very specific purpose 
Um, this week, we're really focusing on two issues. What's your most difficult and important challenge? I don't think we'll be going into the challenges so much as the second question, what is the idea or practice that you want to share? And we're specifically looking for people first and foremost who have already shared their ideas. I believe there are a certain number in the room. Now going to turn it over to Charlotte uh, so she can share her screen and uh, launch the work so we can deep dive into... Um, the sharing of experience that is the purpose of this session. Thank you very much, uh, Reda. And once again, warm welcome to you. I just want to start with a quick poll. So there is a question I typed in the chat, say, have you submitted an idea in the IDS engine? Type yes if you have done so, and no if you haven't. And I'm glad to see that uh, Syed uh, Zais has, he tells us, uh, uh, Dr. Meraban Shah from uh, Afghanistan tells us he has submitted an idea in the IDS engine. So go ahead and type in the chat, warm welcome to you. I have two questions uh, that for you today. What is the idea or practice that you want to share? What ideas are you looking for to uh, for to help you with your challenge. But I really want to invite you to focus uh, on the very first question, that is the idea or the practice that you want to share. And I would like to turn uh, towards uh, 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 um, uh, uh, Dr. I would like to turn towards uh, Dr. Miraban Shah uh, uh, and invite them to unmute so that you'll be able to share his idea or practice with us. So, uh, sorry, I'm actually inviting you to unmute. I hope you're able to unmute mm -hmm. and speak to us. Okay, uh, that's great. Uh, Good uh, afternoon, uh, Charlotte and uh, Reda. Uh, thanks uh, for giving this opportunity uh, to discuss about this. And this is Dr. Saad Mehra Masha from Afghanistan, a technical officer with the World Health Organization country office. Uh, even though I uh, recently started my working with the WHO, but uh, in the past I worked uh, for more than seven years in the, the uh, Ministry of Public Health in the National EPA program, and uh, I was uh, working as a surveillance officer. So uh, my uh, idea is that uh, uh, it was about the uh, measles outbreak response based on the current measles situation in the uh, measles ep epidemiology in the country. Uh, are you there? Yeah. Uh, yes, we can hear you, Dr. Miraban. Can you first of all tell us uh, uh, what your challenge was and under which strategic priority did you submit the idea? Uh, it is uh, 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 sorry that uh, which one it was the uh, strategic area. Uh, comprehensive health response, it is a uh, Okay, primary health care and universal primary. health coverage. Okay, uh, and the issue is that the, the current, uh, currently Afghanistan is suffering from the measles uh, uh, and uh, these uh, outbreaks and the sporadic cases are reported all over the country. And for that reason, so the uh, National EPI and WHO UNICEF uh, decided to assign a committee to do a risk assessment in the country to identify high-risk districts, and uh, we did that and uh, identify 160 districts of, out of 407 districts in, uh, based on uh, some criteria. And the criteria was the MCB1 uh, and MCB2 coverage less than 50% and the uh, number of cases reported from the suspected cases and love confirmed cases and also the dropout between Penta1 and MCB1 coverage. So, uh, and also the kind of, uh, the outbreak was uh, uh, ongoing in 49 districts and uh, the committee decided that for, for the first phase, uh, we will conduct a, a measles outbreak response in the 49 districts. So the fund was uh, approved by the MRI uh, for this, uh, since so Afghanistan, Afghanistan is a donor dependent and uh, there is nothing right now. And you know that the current situation in Afghanistan that uh, after the uh, devolution in the country, and uh, the new government, and uh, it is still not recognized. Uh, even though the situation is uh, uh, calm and uh, uh, there is no no such uh, uh, fighting going on in the country, but uh, the the health system is uh, almost collapsed. But right now, the WHO and NSF somehow uh, running the health system for uh, supported by the donors. And uh, the 49 district was identified in the uh, age, range, uh, age range of the children 6 to 59 months, uh, so around uh, uh, 
uh, 90% of the uh, uh, affected uh, uh, persons was uh, less than five years old. And uh, 1.3 million children will be covered in this uh, uh, 49 districts. And the, how we are measuring it so that the, the number of districts covered by the measles outbreak response, and uh, it, this, uh, the, it will start from the 12th. Uh, March uh, 2022, the number of eligible children vaccinated during this uh, uh, operation in 49 districts and reduction in number of measles cases uh, after con conducting outbreak response. Uh, it is the, this is the usual practice in, uh, in the country, so uh, we are suffering uh, to the measles and other vaccine preventable diseases. Uh, Afghanistan is one of the country in, uh, in two countries in the world now, uh, uh, including Pakistan, and uh, the polio is uh, also a, a, a epidemic in the country. Uh, what the most important things that you have learned from, so yeah, this is very important that you work uh, 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 and work with the all partners to identify such uh, issues and uh, present these things to the uh, donors to support Afghanistan regarding the measles elimination. So uh, it is related to recovery of routine immunization services, and it is under uh, the uh, strategic uh, uh, priority area five, uh, K for uh, comprehensive health service response. And uh, it is all from my side. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for sharing uh, this with us. And we noticed that you have up to three ideas in the ideas engine. So we had a little bit of trouble uh, uh, getting uh, this one, but we finally got to it. I would like to invite you, if you have listened uh, uh, to this idea that uh, uh, has been shared, uh, 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 if you have any questions or comments, can you go ahead and type? And I know that uh, uh, my, my question, Charlotte, Charlotte, I have a question that uh, how many ideas can be uh, up, uh, uploaded yes. in the I in want to. Yes, yeah, Charlotte, I want to intervene and thank you, Syed, uh, for, for submitting three ideas because when you said it, Charlotte, it almost sounded as if Syed had done something wrong by submitting more than one all. idea. <laughs> and that is not at all the case. So let me reassure you. In fact, I'd like to offer you a round of applause and we want to make sure that we encourage you to share. Obviously, every person has more than one idea. We'd like every member of the movement. Imagine if every member of the movement, there's 6,100 and some uh, people... That would mean more than 6,000 ideas collected on the Ideas Engine. We know everyone, some people won't be able to contribute. So, Syed, we especially appreciate your, your contribution. Thank you. And I want to make sure that is uh, conveyed clearly without anything equivocal about that. Appreciate uh, your contributions. But glad we found the correct one, Charlotte. Thanks. Yeah, thank you so much, Reda. And uh, I was just about to congratulate uh, Syed also for that. So I would like to turn towards Francois, guys. But before that, if you have any questions or comments on uh, Syed's idea, please go ahead, type them in the chat, or you can raise your hand and I'll be delighted to unmute yourself and speak. So I'm turning now to Dr. Francois Gaz that has listened to uh, Syed's idea. Uh, uh, Francois, do you have any questions uh, uh, for uh, Syed? Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you, Syed, for sharing your, your challenge ahead, which is basically to control and how to detect first an outbreak of measles and then to address uh, measles, the control of this outbreak in your overall context of measles elimination. We're all aware of the challenging environment in Afghanistan. It's very hard to do well. And I would like from you, uh, what what are the, the key lessons from you will learn? Because oh, what have been the, the key things that will make you successful when you implement your 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 SIS for measles targeting those 49 districts, uh, how are you going to do well? I think the goal is perfectly understandable, but we know the local challenge. What will make you, what are the critical activities that will make you successful in reaching 90% of the eligible children? Over to you, thank you. Okay, uh, Said, I'm inviting you to unmute. Please, can you go ahead? Okay. Uh, thank you, Francis. Uh, and, uh, it is very valid, uh, valid question. And uh, uh, to reach 90% or uh, more than 90% coverage, and uh, 
uh, it is uh, quite difficult because uh, Afghanistan is also uh, uh, has a problem in the, the denominator. So uh, it will be uh, a challenging uh, for us. Uh, uh, even though uh, in, uh, we have already conducted the missile uh, outbreak response in some provinces, but still we have uh, uh, missile cases reported from our there in December. We conducted this is not so far, but, but still uh, the outbreak or missile cases are reported. So it is showing that uh, uh, the challenges are micro planning. Uh, we are still facing challenges and problem in micro planning and uh, identify those uh, wide uh, missed pockets or missed communities or uh, missed children which are uh, still missing and uh, they are uh, remaining from the vaccination in this uh, outbreak response and it will remain as well. Because uh, and also the MCV one uh, uh, vaccine will produce 85 percent uh, immunity and it, it it will remain the same in uh, in the in the future as well. It will be difficult for us to uh, come over uh, and control the measles or eliminate measles in Afghanistan. Our uh, uh, second question: What is your routine courage? We know you have been through tremendous environmental and problems and local civil issues. What is your routine courage and average in those 49 districts? Is it very low or is it medium high? What is it? Uh, Syed, uh, can you unmute? Okay, I'm asking you to unmute again. Okay, thank you. Uh, the, the coverage, uh, uh, actually, this, uh, the routine immunization coverage uh, in some districts are uh, even more than 90%. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, based on the surveys conducted in Afghanistan, uh, the last survey which was conducted in 2018, it, is what it was the Afghanistan Health uh, Survey. Based on that, the MCV1 coverage was around 40, uh, 64%. And uh, the the MCV two coverage coverage is uh, around 40 percent, uh, 40, 40, 40%. Uh, and uh, also the routine immunization vaccines are provided at nine months and eighteen months. So that means that two rounds of vaccines are provided, but the the demand is very low uh, at the community, and uh, they, that's, uh, that is the main problem. And uh, uh, this is, I think, our from myself. Thank you. Thank you, Said. My last question to you. In terms of uh, the challenge you face when you are you will execute the campaign, I'm sure some of the challenge will be similar to the challenge you face in routine. My guess when you tell me the courage is that you have a lot of unreached children. You mentioned it's a demand issue. Do you have evidence that is not an outreach execution issue? It means there are many pocket villages that are never reached by outreach. And what are you going to do it during that campaign to make sure you reach them? What was the main cause for not reaching those kids uh, with outreach? Over to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, that is very, very important question. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the reason that we are uh, lagging behind and that for the last years uh, that the, the, the coverage is uh, based on the survey is not more than 60%. And it's showing that the uh, routine immunization program is not only uh, implemented from the fixed side, but in the past, be before 15 August, uh, most of the areas were under the control of Taliban and uh, they banned the outreach in mobile strategy and one the fixed site was providing health survey immunization services. And that was the reasons. And also in this campaign, uh, we, we, we divided this to the fixed site, 35% of the uh, uh, services or, uh, will be provided from the fixed site and remaining 65% uh, will be provided from outreach and mobile site to sites and uh, identified sites or mask to mask uh, uh, whenever wherever where is possible the parents can check their children for vaccination and it will be easy for the parents and uh, caregivers to take their children to that uh, site that is our okay so your your challenge as you mentioned is outreach what are you going to do differently this time with the campaign to do better than the outreach during routine 
as, as I mentioned that the, uh, we planned a site-to-site -site, uh, campaign in this uh, uh, outbreak response in 49 districts. And uh, we will reach those areas. Previously, it was inaccessible, but now it is accessible in, in all over the country. And now it's possible to reach those areas, okay. hard to reach areas, or miss pocket, or communities, miss communities in this campaign. And we'll vaccinate all the children under five, six to 59 months. Okay. In Thank days. you very much. It's very clear, Syed. Thank you for your sharing your your plans and i wish you the best for that campaign for the sake of afghan children thank you thank you uh, thank you very much francois and thanks to you syed for sharing this idea in the ideas engine and i'm sure uh, uh, that uh, all those who are in countries that are actually um, uh, going through a measles outbreak or any other outbreak right now are going to learn something from this and as you can see on the screen i'm showing uh, 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 syed's idea in the ideas engine and uh, you can visit it and go through it and read but at the end uh, you don't only read but you can also leave comments you can also leave comments or questions in the comment section in the ideas engine to tell uh, to share your own experience as far as a measles outbreak is concerned and what you are doing in your context maybe to ask questions additional questions or, or for clarification to syed and also uh, 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 also just to 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 comment to give feedback or maybe ideas share of what you are doing in your context maybe a little bit differently from what uh, Syed has shared in his idea and that is not all that is not all i know this is not a technical support session but because we are here in the ideas engine once you read this idea if you find that it is very useful it is compelling it is helpful for you you can uh, vote for this idea by clicking on the stars the le if you click on star number four it means that the rate you're giving is four stars it could be three stars five stars and then you can see click on the little triangle to see how many people have voted uh, uh for uh, uh the idea or have rated uh, uh the idea so i'm really looking for to you in the room if you have already shared an idea in the ideas engine or even if you have not yet done so but you have an idea because we all face we are all facing challenges as far as immunization is concerned please go ahead and raise your hand and i'll be delighted to invite you to unmute yourself and being aware of uh, the time that we have for this session 30 minutes i know we are 20 minutes gone but i think we still have the time to listen to at least uh, one uh, uh, one uh, uh, other ideas so i'll just go back uh, to my questions so the question is what is the idea or practice that you want to share even if you have not yet shared the idea in the ideas engine but there is an idea there is a practice that you are carrying out in your context to overcome uh, 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 the immunization challenge you are facing and and i see uh, uh samuel uh maloge badekan you said well done said in the chat i'm asking you to unmute yourself what uh, uh, and just uh, share your own feedback based on what Said has shared. You know, why did you say well done? It's important for us to see what you learned uh, uh, from uh, 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 from uh, this uh, particular idea. Yes. Okay, Sam, hello. And please do start by introducing yourself. Hi. Yes, I'm Samuel Malogai. Uh, but they can. I think uh, listening to Said, and uh, I must say that uh, it's important that uh, with the strategy that he put in place, as which has helped him to detect measles cases, uh, that's why I'm I'm congratulating him for that effort that he has taken or the effort that he has put in place. I think uh, those are very nice strategies that uh, we can all adopt in our settings to improve case detection not for only measles for but for other vaccine preventable diseases like yellow fever and the others okay uh, thank you samuel and uh, i saw you said you have not yet uh, submitted an idea in the ideas engine but i'm sure you have an idea that you want to submit that with us please but before you and do just, so Charlotte, I want, one more uh, and I'd like to challenge uh, our the last uh, the, the person who just spoke. Um, sorry, I, I don't have your name in front of me. Uh, to make sure, so Charlotte has just asked you to share an idea or practice, and I'd like to ask you to commit 
to by the next uh, experience sharing session or actually by you know the by the assembly monday that we will see and find your idea uh, the one that you're you're about to share over back to you charlotte uh, thank you, Reda. So, Samuel, uh, uh, Malo guy, are you giving us the assurance that by next week on Monday for the Global Assembly, you're going to have your idea in the ideas engine? Yeah, certainly. It will be ready. Okay. And before I turn towards you to share your idea, uh, there is a comment in the chat from Sayed. He says, uh, uh, am I... Am I on the right uh, track or do I need some improvement? And I'm going to turn towards Francois to respond to Said. Francois, uh, uh, is Said, and I'm sure from your questions, you or he already has the answer to that, but I want you to reassure him. Uh, Francois, is Said in the, on the right track or he needs some improvement? Listen, uh, Charlotte, you know, I'm here sitting in, in Spain. <laughs> I'm not in Afghanistan with a challenge that the, 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 the team that will execute the micro plan for, uh, for trying to stop that outbreak, that outbreak, their response. I think it's a, it's a challenge that very few people have an idea. What I was very pleased is to know that now there is, there is a window open because in this area, before you couldn't reach all communities for the reasons you mentioned. And today, he can reach those communities. So maybe, if, and he has done a micro planning side by side to reach them. So the, the, a micro plan is always a micro plan. And I hope that he can monitor that the micro plan is executed as per his dream idea of success. And this will come with a close monitoring that the team are really going to those area and that the population is informed that the team is coming that day and will be there. And I think execution is a critical, and that's what usually make it a success or not. It's not uh, the micro planning is 20% of the job. The execution is 80% of the job. So a good close monitoring system and making sure that all the logistics in place, given his commitment, we should make it a success story that would be very useful then to share. Good luck, Syed, and over to you, Charlotte. And Thank just one you thing, so Charlotte. Much. Yeah, Charlotte, yes, there's a uh, yeah, there's a question from JJ who's uh, uh, listening in on Facebook. So JJ, I I uh, I wish you were with us in the Zoom room. We'll we'll be we'll only be live streaming the next few sessions, and then it, you you will reserve this only for members of the movement uh, who are in the Zoom room with us. Uh, but he wants to know. He's, he kind of asks a broad question, so this may dis detract from the flow which we've been having very specific discussions, but. Uh, I'm sure yeah. JJ is asking this um, not by, you know, his question is not uh, uh, a theoretical one. What are the strategies to use to help improve coverage in a fragile country? Um, and I'd like maybe to ask you, uh, Charlotte and and, uh, and Francois, you know, from a broad, generic kind of question like that, um, how can you go from the specific case that Syed has uh, has described with great detail and accuracy um, back to those kinds of general questions? But you know, this may not be the right time to discuss this. So please proceed if uh, if you don't find this to be a relevant issue. Maybe it's just a general. You know, well, my experience has been to try to to help country to reach the how to reach mothers with tetanus vaccine. I've been working a lot on routine immunization as well. But when you talk about tetanus, you talk of fragile system. You talk about mothers who have no access to a midwife, who deliver at home with, uh, with, with sub-hygienic conditions. And you need to reach those women that hardly, uh, hardly see a vaccinator even. They, they are in remote areas. And I think the, f the first step was definitely, as I had said, a very detailed micro planning and making sure that uh, the key now to use a word that people <laughs> use a lot influences exist in every community they need to be prepared for making sure that they are supporting and help when the vaccination team comes so this is absolutely critical the 
maybe a second uh, step important is to be sure that the logistics, you're not letting the vaccinator without the logistics they need to move there, the vaccine, the transport, assessing very well the how much do they have to, to walk to reach to those communities. Maybe uh, a second uh, very important, uh, third important point is that in some areas, hard to reach represent a really, really challenging. And maybe one way to reach 80% is to, when you do the mapping on reaching those outreach, is to focus on the most populated villages because the last 5% or 10%, 15% sometimes, are extremely hard to reach geographically, logistically, you need boat, you need a river, you need canoe, you need time. So making sure that you remap and you by priority reach the most popular terrain. And I would focus on one, one, uh, one point, which I think is coming through the discussion that has already come, in that those communities, vaccination is very often not their priority. They are, they dying from many other things than vaccinating preventable disease. And if there is always a possibility to bring along with the vaccine, a life-saving intervention they are all aware of would be helpful. It should be explored how much you can offer two or three additional interventions at the same time of the vaccine that will bring a higher up demand. I think this has been raised in some of the discussion. I think it's something we have to start looking more closely on offering a package and not just one vaccine. Of course, some vaccine attracts everybody. In sub-Saharan Africa, meningo R vaccine brings 100% because there is a scare. Everybody knows this terrible outbreak of meningo meningitis outbreak and all come along but you do it only once every number of years. So here, really, try to look what would make the, the population come to your site altogether, because they want not the vaccine, but the other interventions. It's just a brief, uh, brief sort of uh, sharing some of the experience and the shared ideas of others. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Francois. And, uh, uh, I see we are already at the 30 minutes mark, so uh, this session are just for 30 minutes uh, because we do know you're busy professionals, we respect your time. But uh, I had promised uh, Samuel uh, Maleuge Badiekan that we're going to listen to his idea. So be, feel free to drop off now if you know that you have a busy, that you're busy with work and you want to get back to that. But I still think that we can listen to, if Francois permits, of course, uh, uh, we can still listen to, 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 to Samuel uh, right now, whom I'll be inviting straight away uh, thank you, to uh, unmute. I just want to uh, thank yes, you, Brenda? Charlotte. Yes, I, w I just want to thank you, Charlotte and Francois for uh, your willingness to stay over. We keep these sessions short, as, as you said, because we respect uh, the time of busy professionals. And at the same time, if busy professionals are, are telling us that this is worth their time and they want to spend more, I really, really appreciate that you're able to stay over beyond the allotted time. Thank you, Charlotte and Francois. And participants, of course, if you need to go, please go. But if you are interested in hearing more about Samuel's uh, challenge, uh, yeah, I'm glad that we're able to, uh, to extend the time and again, really appreciate uh, Charlotte and, and Francois, your commitment to supporting all these participants who uh, are sharing their experience. Uh, thank you so much, Reda. So, Samuel, uh, over to you. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, loud and clear. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, my challenge uh, is uh, arise as of my current role as a uh, research focal person for my region. Uh, mostly, we, as much as we are delivering immunization services and then also uh, administration of vaccines and the various uh, vaccination posts, sometimes we have ish incidents where people do resist or do not want to take 
uh, vaccines, they are a bit uh, being a bit uh, hesitant or they decide not to go and take their vaccines. And as such, uh, it's something that we really don't know how much or why it's, it's like that. And we decided to also uh, draft a research protocol or a proposal that we can use to investigate and find out about the contextual issues that really make people not to want to take vaccines or they have to delay or they refuse to go to the centers for the vaccinations. I think and we have successfully been able to draft the protocol We've gone through the ethical clearance stage and we are at the stage of the data collection and my, the challenge that we currently have is that uh, we have challenges with uh, how to get the data collectors to the field, uh, actually how to get funding for them or uh, how they can, we can get support for them to go to the field in terms of their transportation and then uh, buying of data that they will be using to submit the uh, reports or the information that will be collected that we can then analyze to understand what the issues are. And then based on that, we can also see how the system can develop interventions as to how we can uh, channel it to make people uh, accept vaccines readily so that as it starts small, small, we don't know what may happen. Perhaps the situation may expand. Once people, some group of people starts and then you are not able to dispel it, perhaps others may also join the same trend. I think currently that's the challenge that I'm, fa I'm faced with as an immunization professional. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Samuel. But before you, I want to ask you, can you, uh, it's not every day we get to hear immunization professionals talk about uh, research and innovation, trying to look for ways to understand what is happening. So can you please just remind us uh, uh, where you're working, at what level of the health system, so that we can better understand your challenge and this idea of doing uh, this research to find out the real reasons for uh, 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 low uh, vaccine uptake and acceptance in your context? Okay, yes. Uh, previously, I was working at a district level. Uh, we used to go to the field as uh, immunization. We used to go there to also administer vaccines to uh, target groups. But for now, uh, that was somewhere 2020 that uh, I was moved to the regional level. We are now in a newly created region in Ghana, known as, known as Ahafo. And now I'm the research focal person. And be as a, 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 an immunization professional, you would be, we would want to know what is happening within the systems. Once we are doing, especially now that we started with the COVID vaccines, you can see that some people decide not to take it. But as we are also doing other researches, you need to also understand it. Those can help us to also take decisions within our level to make sure that we, we take care of or we handle people uh, willingly, willingly, not by forcing them to go in for vaccinations, but how our messages can be tailored to improve such within our context. Uh, thank you. And can you tell us uh, what what coverage? What's the baby uh, 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 for an antigen like Penta three or even um, uh, 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 um, even COVID that made you to think that there was a problem of acceptance and push you to want to do this research? So, what are your uh, coverage rates uh, there? Yeah, with the with the COVID specifically, as of. Uh, as of December, our coverage was around was hovering around uh, 13 to 20 percent. That's the coverage uh, for the target groups that we were vaccinating, and there are ins instances that do vaccinators come and they come with reports that uh, some people decide not to take the vaccine, and then even before even the vaccination itself, we're having this yellow fever vaccination campaign. Uh, where I was a supervisor, and we usually go to community as well to 
see when people are there, we mobilize them to go to the vaccination post to get vaccinated. And there are instances that we get in touch with some you who have some kind of uh, information that, that uh, the vaccines are meant to harm people or something or it's a way that the world is trying to control populations and so many disinformations. So we have to take our time to explain to them that specifically for uh, this particular vaccination is for yellow fever uh, vaccination. However, uh, as at that time, COVID vaccines were not out for people to use, but we also made them to understand that with vaccines, they, those are, they are tested at several stages before they are ruled out for uh, the population to use. So nobody would be willing or would uh, out of uh, maybe make your mind that you would bring vaccines out to hurt other people or to uh, control populations or do any other thing. But rather it's for the safety of the general populations that vaccines are developed. Okay, I want to turn towards Francois. Uh, Francois, any additional questions for uh, for Samuel? I think to follow up your your question, uh, you know, we see that for the COVID uptake, it's very low. It's 13 to 20 percent. At the same time, I can see that Samuel has done. It seems the right thing when there was a yellow fever to talk to the community, to those influencers, to try to share the right information that uh, the safety of the vaccine and maybe, you know, in general, we have assumed that uh, now uh, EPI is running since 79 worldwide and we take uh, EPI vaccine as routine and we don't do enough in sharing information about the safetyness of the vaccine and the effectiveness and communicating with the right people, the, the village, traditional leaders, religious leaders, influencers at the village. We don't share enough the information and then the door is closed. When you don't share information, you don't communicate, the door is closed. Now, following what you ask, I would like to ask Samuel what uh, Penta 3 coverage is. Has it been affected by the rumors about COVID vaccine? That's my first question. Over to yeah. you. Okay, with Penta 3 coverage, for now, let me uh, check from, uh, I can't have it off head, but I can I have access to that information, which maybe in our next meeting or... Uh, but I'll is it, it, is it high, you know, medium, low, or high, your coverage with Penta oh, I would say it's high, certainly it will be high above 70, certainly. About 70, and has it been affected by the vaccine hesitancy about COVID or not? Do you that's, see it's more that's that's hasn't, it hasn't no. affected it? It hasn't affected it. Uh, I think it's, you know, uh, Samuel, I think it's very good to do the, the, this kind of research because we, are, we have a tendency to assume what are the causes of vaccine hesitancy without listening enough to people who are vaccine hesitant, they need to be listened and to share their concern and that the people in front understand their concern and in the, the concern response, the case response, uh, addressing this particular point. Because if we assume sometimes we may miss the critical, the critical information they need to receive and they feel frustrated not to be listened to. So I think I congratulate you for doing that research, your challenge is to raise money, if I understand well. And I was wondering, in the context of COVID and your planned activities, was there any budget line for trying to, without using a big research name, but enough for quick, uh, rapid investigations to understand if it was vaccine refusal, vaccine hesitant, or vaccine confidence, but not moving? Have you get a special budget line that has been targeting this need that would identify for you the, the root cause of the vaccine hesitancy? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, as part of the protocol development, uh, the as a region, we have a research team 
And we came together to bring our heads together, and there is a budget line for that, which uh, even ha is also even a requirement for the institutional review board, which is for the Ghana Health Service Ethics Review Committee to approve uh, for the protocol uh, for the research to be carried out. So there is a budget line for that. So you you are accessing that budget line, or you have a problem to access it? Yeah, the challenge is that with here we don't have a, a structured funding that may be from the national level or at the uh, regional level, a specific quota of amount is maybe dedicated for research activities. We don't have it that way. However, if you have a, an idea in terms of research and you are doing something, that one, and if you could look for other people that would be willing to support you to carry out the research activity, that is acceptable. But we don't usually have a, a direct funding for research activities. And have you, as you say, I think you have a great idea that you look uh, at your level, if there are potential uh, donor interested to funding, I think... Uh, given the courage that you have achieved with COVID, it seems to be very important to address that question, the root cause of vaccine hesitancy. And have you tried the uh, local, I don't know if you have UNICEF at your regional level, have you tried the other NGOs working with you on the, the COVID vaccination? Because it could optimize uh, your program if you get strategies to answer those vaccine hesitancy reasons. Have you contacted them? Are you and are they open? You know, when you see thirteen percent, you 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 start being worried, and all your partners should be trying to find why and how to do better. Over to you. Yeah. Okay. As at that time, uh, after UNICEF, I don't have a contact there. However, when I was at the district level, there was this uh, mining company that we used to work with, mm -hmm. uh, Newmont Ghana Gold. That sometimes they used to assist me when we are doing community uh, screening for HIV and tuberculosis. But uh, uh, for now, we have, have spoken to that contact person. Uh, but for this year, she said that they wouldn't be able to assist us in that direction. What they can do is that mostly if we have a plan, they may have to integrate it. So if anything, somewhere maybe 2023, 20, that they can, they would be of support to us. But with UNICEF, I don't have a contact there. So and I'm glad that you've mentioned it once. If there's an opportunity like that that we can utilize, uh, I'll be glad to take advantage of it. Thank you. Thank you to you and sharing your experience, Samuel. Over to you, thank, Samuel. thank you so much, Samuel, and thank you, Francois, for those questions. Yes, we go into every detail because uh, those details matter, and at the end of it all, it is for, to have concrete results, concrete ideas that can be implemented to produce concrete results. And I'm sure we are going to be following up with Samuel to see how this turns out and to get uh, the results of his research as well as the idea itself of carrying out the research to, to analyze the causes for low vaccine uptake at the level of his region in his context to get that idea posted in the ideas engine. And I know uh, 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 Samuel reassured me that by Monday, that idea will be available on the ideas engine. So uh, I think we are going to wrap up now, but before we go, I just want to ask Francois in a couple of uh, minutes and words to just uh, uh, share with us the key takeaways for today's uh, uh, experience sharing session, because we got to listen uh, to Saeed from Afghanistan on uh, uh, responding to measles outbreak and uh, from Samuel uh, from Ghana about uh, finding out the reasons for low vaccine uptake in his region. Uh, over to you, Francois. Thank you, Charlotte, and thank you, Sayed and Samuel. I think we we have learned from uh, Sayed that he has a system in place, I suppose linked with uh, polio eradication, that enabled to detect very early an outbreak of measles, and that's commendable because the earlier you detect uh, a measles outbreak, 
the best chance you have to control it because you introduce what is already doing, which is an outbreak response and a campaign in 49 districts. I think the, what we have heard is that uh, the challenge is an Afghan challenge. I'm sure all the countries in the world face it is to reach uh, communities that were never reached before for various reasons and that he understand and he seems to be there is an opening and he's already doing a detailed micro planning which is key uh, which is key the detailed micro planning making sure that all communities will have uh, an outreach post and he mentioned uh, the, the challenge of outreach in routine and the challenge of outreach uh, remain in campaign you need to reach those community and that they need you need the staff and you need the logistics, the resources to reach them, and you make a plan. I think we have highlighted that the challenge is uh, effective execution and making sure that when you when you go in those sites, in those communities, they are willing to be vaccinated, that you don't fake, you don't face fake rumors, you have the support of the community leaders, religious leaders, any influential. And this has to be done before the campaign because at the time of execution is sometimes too late and the results will be there. Now, I, so I, I, we wish, uh, uh, we wish uh, Syed the best for this uh, campaign outbreak that he comes in control and will save lives of children. Now for Syed, I think Syed, you, you put the uh, right, a very critical challenge and you have, you have showed evidence that of your challenge with the coverage you reported for COVID, you were aware, you are aware of the vaccine hesitancy. You have based on your experience also with previous antigen campaign like yellow fever. And I think uh, you have a lot of useful background to justify a research that will lead to a corrective measure uh, adjusted to the main reasons for vaccine hesitancy. And uh, that you're looking for now your next challenge is to receive the funding support you, to, you need to do an investigation. I would add something that you need to be sure that it's not a long term research. It's a relatively rapid research that provides you some critical information. People are sometimes worried about long research. But when you become an operational research, very concrete, very focused, very specific, try to answer key question that will lead to corrective, ad adjusted, adapted corrective measure, maybe potential donors will be really willing to, to listen and maybe to support your funding. And you, you said you will explore UNICEF, all the traditional partners, like you mentioned your, your mind, you know, and, but if you go to the private sector, you better make sure that you, you give an idea that will help them. And I'm sure getting people sick from COVID is not very good for an industry that needs human resources, unless you target the very old people that don't work anymore. So good luck to Samuel with his attempt to raise the funds that he needs to get an answer, a critical answer to do better with vaccine coverage with COVID. Thank you, over to you, Charlotte. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Francois, for that uh, wrap up. And uh, you can also share your takeaways, your thoughts right here in the chat or also as we are ending in Telegram by responding to the message. You just need to click on the link that I shared in the chat. What did you think about these ideas? Can they work for you in your own context? Don't hesitate to share your thoughts with us. And, and we'll be meeting again tomorrow. Yes, Reda? Please. Yes, and Charlotte. Sorry to break your flow, but I think also for those those of you who are um, who have attended, uh, if you found this useful, you're going to get a, a survey asking you uh, for feedback. And if you find this useful, uh, go to Telegram and tell your colleagues. And if you have colleagues at work that you work with, tell them that as well. And uh, appreciate uh, the folks who have uh, shown up for this session. Let me offer a round of applause, Charlotte, before you close. All right, and that's I think we need that. And uh, there are definitely uh, people online. So Mike, uh, Armel, and Suka. Um, just want to acknowledge a couple of you, Manisha, the the Nane. Uh, thank you for uh, for having joined. Back to you, Charlotte. Thank you so much, Reda. Thank you so much, thank Reda. You. Thank you, thank you, Francois. Thank you, Samuel. Thank you, Said, uh, for sharing today. Thanks to all those who have been sharing uh, in the chat. 
and uh, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow if you have not been able to join the ideas engine or your personal space on learning.foundation appointment with us for the technical support session tomorrow at 1 uh, 30 p.m geneva time thank you and wish you all excellent day excellent evening excellent night depending on where you're joining from and for now it is bye from us at the geneva learning foundation all right and just to pick up where charlotte uh, left off and to uh you know, uh, to show you where to go next. So you do have the opportunity tomorrow for the technical support session. And really, what you, what I'd like you to ask you to do, if you've made it, if you watch this much, if you've watched this far, that means you're definitely dedicated and interested in uh, and committed to the uh, uh, full learning cycle, to the movement for immunization agenda. Don't miss the most important part, and that is here. You've received your summons, so you can see mine for the assembly on Monday. And this is the global assembly. So let me see if I can zoom in and show you before we go. Go and find this email. Just type the word summons or assembly into your search if you don't find it right away. If in this, if it's in the chat, please fish us out of the chat. You can see the time here, but there's important information, how to register, how to complete your tasks for this week. Uh, there's also the option, if this is too much for you, you can request your removal from, you can take a pause from the movement or you can leave. We wouldn't want you to stay. We wouldn't keep sending emails if this is uh, not working for you. And then here you can see that um, we you have you the links to go to your learning dashboard. We have some tutorials. If you're having trouble getting to your dashboard, even before you come to technical support, you can see all the little blue links are underlined. That's where you can find useful information. And then of course, there are the links to register for this experience sharing session and the technical support. Thank you, Charlotte. And goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.